All right, so let's talk transport in Pro Tools. The transport controls work and act like any other standard tape deck that you've probably seen. You've got the normal functions of fast forward, stop, play, and record, but there are also a number of other different functions. Here we're looking at the transport control, but in the minimal view. That is to say, it's just the basic playback, fast forward, and record functions. We can actually expand the view to show a lot more parameters by clicking on the small downward arrow. And we have counters, MIDI controllers, sync, expanded transport. So if we select all, it shows us all of the parameters for the transport controls. We can also find the minimal transport controls right up here as well. You can also find the view functions up at the menu, but view, transport, and there you can find them as well. Let's go through each of the transport functions and see what they do. Now to hide and show the transport control, you can go up to window, go to transport, or you can also press the keyboard shortcut command one on the numeric pad. So starting at the far left, we have this button here, which is the sync button or online button. This is primarily used to sync up Pro Tools with other devices or hardware devices. Then we have the return to zero button. And what this does is when pressed brings us to the beginning, the very beginning of the session. We have the rewind, the fast forward, and the go to end. And by clicking on this button brings us to the very end of the session. We have stop, playback, and here you can see that there's a loop around the playback. And this is because it's set right now to loop playback mode. We'll get into that later. And we also have the record button. So I'm just gonna quickly create a track. Now you'll see that we have two little LEDs to the right of the record button. First one is the record enable indicator. When we click on the record button for a track or arm the track to be recorded, this little status indicator is gonna tell us that somewhere in our session is a track and it has been armed and is recorded enabled ready. Once we take the track out of record enable mode, you'll see that the status indicator goes out. The next LED we have is the input monitoring status LED. If input monitoring is activated in a session, this LED is gonna let us know. You can activate and deactivate input monitoring by going to track, selecting auto input monitoring, or by using the keys option K on your computer keyboard. Now to the right, we can see the sync button again that shows up and generate MTC or generate MIDI time code. Clicking on this is going to generate a time code from Pro Tools to any slave devices. And we'll talk about that later. Down at the bottom far left of the transport window, we have the pre and post roll view. In this window, we can set the pre and post roll range, allowing us time before recording and time after recording has ended. To the right of that, we have the selection view. This is the same window as up in the main counter. And this will show us information regarding our selections. Wherever we make the selections, we'll see the start and end points, as well as how long the selections are. Further over, we have the time display and sub time display. For each one of these displays, we have options as to what we want to have displayed. We can have minutes, seconds, time code, feet, frames, and samples. And we can have either of them as the main time display or e any of them as the sub display. Now to the right of the main counter, we have the count off parameter where we can enable or disable the count off. We have metering information, what time signature our session is in, as well as we have tempo information. Below that, we also have some buttons. We have the MIDI wait for note, the metronome, MIDI merge, and the conductor track. So that pretty much wraps up the transport basics. Next chapter, we're gonna move into the IO setup.